I'm Ivana Petrishor, and I'm an environmental forensic scientist. So what do I do? Well, I could sit here the whole day and tell you what I do, because that's how much I like what I do. Instead, I decided to just give you a glimpse, a small glimpse in what I do. I'm sure you'll be amazed and you will want to learn more. So, why sit here? Follow me and watch. Hello again. As you can see, I'm contemplating, looking around, observing, taking notes, taking pictures. Why do I do that? Because that's the first step of any forensic investigation. Environmental forensic investigator means a detective of the environment. Can you picture? I'm following clues and solve mysteries. But what's a mystery all about? That's what I'm here for. A friend of mine just decided to buy a home not long ago and he believes there are some type of environmental issues with that home. He is asking for my help. I am sure there is a mystery involved. However, before I learn more from him, I hear his story, I just want to take my independent notes. And that's what I was doing. Now I'm ready to hear his story. Aren't you thrilled? I am. So follow me and let's find out more about this mystery. I'm thrilled. I can't wait to hear what my friend has to say. What about you? I guess the adventures are starting. Now let's see. Hi, how are you? Come in. It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? Come in. Great. Wow, what a nice location. Wow, oh, that's really a nice place. Well, let me show you. You see, it has a great view. And uh, it's a great place. That's right. You can even see the ocean. Oh my god, that's really nice. You see, it's very nice. You're right. So what's a mystery? I can't wait. Tell me. Well, I didn't know that uh, you, you think it's a mystery here. Of course it must be a mystery. Since you are asking for my help, I'm certain it must be one. Yeah, so I have a little bit of a problem, you know? I know that it's a good idea to talk to neighbors before you buy a house. So I just talked to, to a neighbor of this uh, okay. of the people that live here. And he told me that in the past they might have had a oil spill because they use a um, heating system. That yeah. could be serious. So I was wondering if you can take a look and uh, tell me if the place is uh, safe to live, you know. So that's, that's right. why I was... Uh, Let's go out. Uh, show me exactly uh, where the oil spill could have occurred. And right. Let's have a look. Let's go. All right. All right, here we are in the backyard and I have my toolbox with me, cool. whatever I need. Yes, take samples. Now, uh, just tell me more about this alleged spill. Where did it occur? My neighbor says that the spill occurred in this area, okay. around this tree. And it might be that this tree will give us some clues and that's why I relied on your advice. You're exactly right. You know what? That's really lucky that we have a tree. I think the tree will tell us the truth. I'm actually almost certain because this tree looks pretty old. I would say 40 to 50 years old. We'll see. Now, what shall we do? It's actually pretty simple. I got from my toolbox. This is called a hand auger. And uh, it is what I use to core trees. Just take a sample of the tree tissue from the bark to the core. And we call this core sample. Let me show you how. Uh, this is how we sample a tree. All right. Uh, we, we just choose one direction and it should be close to where the spill occurred. And as I understand it, this way. And um, this is easy to use. Of course, we, we need to identify the tree first. Right. And I'm going to take the core. All right. That's how I'm going to do it. Well, you need a little bit of strength. We are finishing sampling this tree. Little by little, careful, I'm going to take out this core sample. I just want to make sure it's not going to be stuck in this auger. Can you see it? Do you see the rings? Wow. wow. I can see every ring. It's amazing. That's right. 
So that's a sample. You can even use a straw. I prefer this ruler because it keeps it straight, but it's also exposed to the air. It's going to be drier sooner. Now, we are going to measure the width of each ring and we will see how happy the tree was each of the year. And then we are going to check the chemical composition, chemical elements in each ring. And if we had a spill, we are going to see a peak, an increase in several chemical elements, which are associated with oil. In that case, pure oil. Sulfur is a good one. We called it signature chemical. Now we are ready to go to the lab. Cool, let's do it get some soil samples, I suggest probably two depths, not very deep, but a little bit to see what, what, what's going on. So um, usually uh, you can use a jar, there are other devices, but I'm going to just use a jar and a shovel, it's really very simple, all right? So let's see, I guess somewhere around here, all right. There's one more thing I want to show you, and this is called a toddler bag, and this is used to be filled with air. It's going to be filled with air in time. What it's going to check is the quality of the air inside the soil, between the oh, soil that's pores. Too important too, I guess. That's right. So whatever we want to capture in the soil, we may capture in this bag. Already one week since we took the sample. And I have the results. Here they are, ready. Oh, that's great. So uh, let's hear it. Well, I have a bad news, but I also have a good news. So what do you want me to start with? Well, I think uh, let's start with the good news, right? You want to start with good news? Of course. Well, most people want the opposite. Anyway, good news is that uh, there is no risk in your garden, no health risk in your garden. That sounds good. Anyway. Very encouraging. However, I'm not saying there is no risk here in your home. In order to be certain, you need to test the indoor air. As a matter of fact, I think you might have a problem. Really? I'm just joking. I don't think you have a problem, but it will be safer just to get one uh, indoor air sample just before mm -hmm. you, you yeah. decide to buy it. And I can help you with that. Okay. Now, uh, I see you don't want to hear the bad news. Well, why not? Let's hear it. All right. Well, you know what? In a way, it's a bad news, uh, but it's really not bad uh, from the point of view of health. So you, you don't have any problems. However, it was a spill, and I could see it yeah. in the ring. So uh, I think the neighbor was uh, pretty accurate. And I can see when it happened. It happened in 88. Oh, so you can do so, it exactly. That's right, that's right. For my point of view, it's good news because you see, I can use a tree and I can see uh, what we needed to see. And uh, let me show you what, what we see. We see here the waist of, of our tree. And one year it's healthier, the other year is less healthy. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because of pollution, it could be just because of precipitation. However, uh, we can see that the tree was a bit stressed in the beginning of 90s. Oh, really? All right? Yeah. But when we look at the chemical analysis and what we see here, rings, and uh, here is a bark, here is uh, the core of the tree, and right. I'm just noting some years for orientation. This is 1988. And we see sulfur in yellow and chlorine in red. We see a very good match, which usually happens with fuel oil. Mm -hmm. And we see that there is a peak. You see here in 1988? Right. Which means that's a year when fuel oil got into the tree, and because it's so, it was so close to the source, um, I guess that's a year when it happened. But of course, in so many years till present, it was enough time for environment to take care of it. So you're good to go with your home, isn't it? So I think we should toast, right? That's right. To your home. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>